Imagine being on the Titanic, the unsinkable ship, as it hits an iceberg and starts to sink. What would you do? Would you panic or would you stay calm and strategize your survival? This was the grim reality faced by passengers aboard the ill-fated RMS Titanic, a ship once hailed as the epitome of luxury and technological prowess. Among the ship's crew was a man named Charles Jaugen, the chief baker. Jukin was no ordinary crew member, he was a man who had come to embody the essence of survival in the face of overwhelming adversity. Charles Jugan wasn't born a hero, nor did he ever aspire to be one. Born in Birkenhead, England in 1878, Jugan was a simple man who loved his craft. He was passionate about baking, a profession he held in high esteem. When he joined the crew of the Titanic, he was simply looking forward to the adventure of a lifetime, unaware of the tragic fate that awaited the ship. As the ship's chief baker, Jogan was responsible for overseeing the preparation of all bread and pastries for the Titanic's passengers and crew. His days were filled with the comforting aroma of freshly baked bread and the bustling energy of the ship's massive kitchens. Life was good for Jogan until that fateful night of April 14, 1912, when the Titanic struck an iceberg and began its descent into the icy depths of the Atlantic, chaos ensued. The unsinkable ship was sinking and with it the hopes and dreams of its passengers and crew. But amidst the panic and confusion, Jugan remained remarkably calm. He knew that in order to survive, he had to stay focused and make a plan. As the Titanic began to sink, Jugan did something unexpected. He went to his cabin and started to drink. In the face of impending doom, Juin turned to alcohol, but this wasn't a desperate attempt to drown his sorrows. Indeed, amid the chaos of the sinking Titanic, the chief baker found an unlikely ally in the bottle. Now you might think alcohol would be the last thing you'd want in such a situation. Conventional wisdom, after all, suggests that alcohol accelerates hypothermia. Yet, in Jugan's case, the story unfolded quite differently. You see, Yukan didn't just drink, he drank with purpose. He wasn't trying to forget his predicament or lose himself in a drunken stupor. His drinking was strategic. He was harnessing what some might call liquid courage. And this courage didn't just help him keep his wits about him, it helped him stay calm in the face of terrifying uncertainty. There's a theory that the alcohol in Juin's system may have actually delayed his immersion into the icy Atlantic waters. It's as if the alcohol provided him with a kind of buffer, a temporary shield against the deadly cold. And while we can't say for certain that this was the case, we do know that Jugen managed to survive in conditions that claimed the lives of hundreds of others. But let's be clear, this isn't an endorsement of alcohol as a survival tool. It's a testament to Jugen's remarkable ability to stay calm and think strategically under extreme pressure. It's the story of a man who, when faced with the unimaginable, found a way to survive. In the midst of the Titanic disaster, Juan didn't just drink, he drank with intention. He found courage in the face of fear. He found hope in the face of despair. And in doing so, he turned the tide of his own fate. Juan, far from being incapacitated by his drinking, was surprisingly lucid and strategic. In the midst of chaos, Juan managed to think clearly and strategize his survival. When the unsinkable Titanic met its fate, Jukin remained composed, his mind focused on survival. As the terrified passengers scrambled for lifeboats, he went about methodically, his actions reflecting a deep understanding of the situation. One of his strategies was to throw deck chairs into the icy waters of the Atlantic. A seemingly odd action at first, but with a calm and strategic mind, Jukin understood the potential of these chairs. They were not just pieces of furniture anymore, but potential flotation devices that could aid in survival. But Jugin did not stop there. He went beyond the immediate panic, his eyes scanning the sinking ship for other means of survival. His calmness was not born out of ignorance, but from a deep awareness of the gravity of the situation. This led him to spot an overturned lifeboat. Most would have seen this as a vessel of despair, a lifeboat that had failed in its purpose, but not Jugin. He saw it as an opportunity, a platform that could keep him afloat in the icy waters. He swam towards it, his body battling the freezing temperatures. Clinging onto the overturned lifeboat, he waited. His survival, now a game of patience and endurance. The cold, 
was biting. The fear was real, but his strategy had worked. He had turned the chaos of the sinking ship into a game of survival, his actions reflecting not just bravery, but a deep understanding of the situation. Jugin's calmness and strategic thinking were key to his survival. But there's one more thing that played a role. Beyond the alcohol and strategic thinking, there was something else that helped Jugan survive, his will to live. Now this is a powerful statement that speaks volumes about the human spirit. What is this will to live, you ask? It's an inner force, a determination, a relentless drive that refuses to give up, no matter how dire the circumstances. Charles Jugan's story is a shining example of this indomitable spirit. As the freezing waters of the Atlantic swirled around him, he didn't succumb to despair or panic. Instead, he held on, fueled by the raw determination to survive. His mind, instead of focusing on the imminent danger, was consumed by the singular thought of survival. It's often said that in times of intense crisis, our true character is revealed. For Jugen, his character was that of a survivor. He didn't merely hope to survive, he willed it. He transformed this will into action, into a force that propelled him forward, helping him to stay calm, focused, and ultimately alive. The importance of such resilience and willpower in survival situations cannot be overstated. It's not just about physical strength or intelligence. It's about the strength of the mind, the resolve of the spirit. It's about the ability to stare death in the face and say, not today. And let's not forget, Jugan wasn't a trained survivalist, he was a baker. His story is a reminder that this will to survive, this resilience isn't exclusive to heroes in action movies or adventure novels. It's inherent in all of us. It's part of what makes us human. So what can we take away from Jugin's tale? Perhaps it's the understanding that when it comes to survival, the most powerful tool we have is our mind. Our will to live can move mountains, cross oceans, and yes, even survive the sinking of the Titanic. Jokin's story is a testament to the human spirit's ability to endure and survive against all odds. It's a tale of survival that transcends time and continues to inspire, reminding us all of the power of the human will Yugen's story offers valuable lessons on survival in crisis situations. His tale, emerging from the depths of the Titanic's doom, is not merely one of chance or luck. It's a testament to the power of the human spirit of resilience and the will to survive. Firstly, we learn about the importance of calmness. Amidst the pandemonium that unfolded that night, Jugen remained composed. His tranquility in the face of imminent danger allowed him to reason to think clearly and logically, it's a reminder to us all that in times of crisis, panicking can be our greatest enemy. Next, let's not forget the role of strategic thinking in Juin's survival. He was not a passive player in his fate. He actively sought out ways to increase his chances of survival, delaying his immersion in the freezing waters and ultimately finding an overturned lifeboat to cling to. His story teaches us that in dire circumstances, we must use our intellect and resourcefulness to strategize our survival. Resilience, too, played a significant role. The icy chill of the Atlantic, the screams of the doomed, the sight of the unsinkable sinking. The circumstances were enough to break the strongest of spirits. Yet Jugen's resilience saw him through. His will to live was unyielding, a testament to the indomitable human spirit that resides within us all. Lastly, Jugen's story highlights the importance of the will to survive. Even when all odds seemed stacked against him, he refused to succumb. His determination to live, to see another day, was a key factor in his survival. It's a powerful reminder that sometimes, our greatest weapon in the face of adversity is our own will to survive. So if you ever find yourself in a sinking ship, remember Charles Jewin, and remember that sometimes, survival is a matter of the mind as much as it is of the body.